Welcome to URI Just Getting Started, episode 32. I'm your host, Scott Brand. Today, I'm happily joined with Marcus DeShields, DeShields with a capital S, right? And uh, he's a star running back for the University of Rhode Island. He's also a guy that jumps over defenders. He's done that twice this year. He's earned the name Hurdle Master. Who, who gave you that name, Marcus? Uh, Coach Flynn gave me that name. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I got to get him on. He gave me that name uh, early August uh, after I had that clip in our uh, team scrimmage. And then another one? Yeah, I had another one that day. You know, I found some uh, tape of you at St. Francis. We're going to show you later again. Yeah, got some people <laughs> over there, too. <laughs> I heard, you know, it. you're not so phased by it like everyone else. It's just a natural thing. Yeah, it's just kind of a part of my game at this point. It's something that I've been doing for a little while. But um, I'm glad it's something that, you know, can excite fans and spectators. So. It's always nice. Well, they'll be more excited today because after the podcast, we have bonus coverage. I'm I'm being a real tease today. We're not showing it. So if you want to watch Marcus jump over some players, big players, tall, how tall were those players? You know how tall they were? Taller than me, close to like six foot. That makes it even crazier. Freakish. Yeah. So if you want to watch a guy, Superman, jump over two guys to – Defenders two separate times this year, then you have to stay on and watch him this whole podcast, which isn't a hard thing to do because he's just blowing up right now. Aren't you, Marcus? Yes, sir. Seems like it. I'm very glad it's, uh, we can look at it that way. Yeah, I mean, I read the stats alone, and then I watch the video, and then I watch some groups like the Hunt Group. Are you being considered now? Are you raising some eyebrows? Within the NFL at this point, is the Hunt Group is pretty esteemed. Um, I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know right now. I, I mean, I know I've been getting you know some articles written about me, which is always good. You know what I mean. Uh, but I really got to give thanks to those five guys up front because without them, you know, the articles and my name getting mentioned doesn't really happen. So, but as far as like NFL and things like that, not really where my focus is just yet. You know, that's always like a, it's been a goal for me since I was a kid, but. No word from any NFL scouts, teams, or anything like that. So just taking okay. it day by day, just focusing on uh, getting into the CAA playoffs and, you know, hopefully winning the championship here at Rhode Island. Yeah, and uh, that hurdle master thing earned you an ESPN top 10 play of the day. You were number four or five, I believe. Five. So, uh, are you going to take these offensive linemen out for a lobster dinner in Newport? Yeah, I would. Would. I owed him that, man. I owed him that and a little bit more. I know, I know that much. But we got a we got a very tight relationship, you know. When I maybe when I get my pockets right, I'll take all the big guys out to eat. That's a heavy maybe, tax to cover. <laughs> maybe a lobster bisque soup is more. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever they want. Yeah, whatever they want. Even that, without this these inflationary times, that's that's going to dent your wallet too. You need to sell. Do you ha do you have any shirts going on with this new uh, uh, system? No. Nothing. No. Nothing. Why? I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know. We have I, to talk to some people. Yeah. yeah. Some people. It, 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 I'm, I'm not against the idea. It just hasn't happened yet. Well, I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen within a week. Yeah, but um, I'm going to tweet out that. And, you know, it's just a definite. So um, tough loss yesterday. You uh, you drove back long drive on the bus or do you fly or what, what do you guys do yeah we fly we flew oh. we fly. yeah yeah we flew back so it was a quick trip quick trip there quick trip back wasn't too bad you know what i mean quick little but 30 minute bus ride from uh from the school to the airport so it was fine Not oh i feel bad. better now all this yeah. time i was i was feeling bad for you thinking about you on the bus yeah that ride back would have been deadly man we don't need that that would have been hard are you on the patriots um uh, flight now your flight plane still uh no, no no i think that was just a one time thing last year i can't heard remember about it yeah i heard about it i heard about it last year they said they had a pretty good time on that plane last year well getting back to the game yesterday that was a heartbreaker and uh coach fleming really he likes to take a lot of chances and i give him credit for that what is your uh opinion of that going for two at the end gotta go for the win i mean last week we had a seven overtime game you know what i mean 
Mm-hmm. But I put us through a lot mentally and emotionally and physically. So, you know, whatever, you know, I, I trust Coach Lim as a head coach. And, you know, if that's the way he wanted to go, then, you know, I'm all the way for it. You know what I mean? I yeah. like that decision. Yeah, I, it's so hard to get coverage here. So I'm on ESPN and I'm thinking uh, your field goal kicker missed I'm blaming him for about 30 minutes. And finally, I get coverage and I see that he went for it. He's a, he's a gambler, but. Yeah. Uh, you guys just don't give up. So you have, what, you're, you have a hashtag, right? Um, uh, what's that called again? Well, oh uh, yeah. So um, R.I.P. Chief. That's uh, just a little t- uh, contribution to my grandfather who passed away in 2018. So oh. I just do for him. You know, it's, it's just my main reason why, you know, I do a lot of the things I do. Losing him, you know, he's a big motivation to me, so. I just always use that hashtag just to show my guy some love. Wow. That's a great thing. You must have had a phenomenal relationship with your grandfather. Very, very close. Very close. Did a lot of, he did a lot for me coming up, did a lot of raising me. So, you know, always pay my respects to him every chance I get. Well, another hashtag is never give up because you were down 31 24, looked mm-hmm. a little bleak. You're playing in their house. And once again, your quarterback, came through tell me about the game a little bit from the beginning you have a nice lead 14-0 right yeah yeah so so you know the goal is to always come out hot you know we came out hot like we uh like we planned you know i mean uh, a couple drives didn't go our way i mean try some field goal attempts then knock those down so um come back out of half time three and out you know what i mean they get the ball back they put up their two touchdowns 14-14 now we know we got a ball game you know what I mean? It would have been it would have been yeah. great to just keep the pace that we had going. But you know, in, in the games up and downs, you know, you know they, they got guys on scholarship just like we do, so they're going to make some plays, and we know that as part of the game. But uh, we definitely fought, man. Our, that's one thing about this team: we don't give up. We don't we don't go down without a fight. You know what I mean? So I I love that yeah. about my guys. But you know, unfortunately, obviously things didn't go our way. But got to shake that L off and you know get ready for me next week. Big game coming up. Still got a chance to do some big things, and we know that. So, and so you had know. another big game too. It was so you're just consistently putting up over a hundred yards. You had a nice run. Yes, Tell me about your game individually. I know you're not supposed to. It's a team, but, but give me a little uh, love about your game. I'm a big fan well, of yours. Well, um, you know, I, I feel as though our run game, for one, is is one of the best in the CAA, if not, you know the best in my opinion I, I obviously say that a little biased but you know like I said those five guys up front they make life so much easier for me and our Caleb Warren you know what I mean and our big mm-hmm. tight Brady Rourke you know what I mean we go 12 personnel and things just opening up left and right you know what I mean so they really make things easier for me I just got to make the right read and after I make that first or second cut you know the rest is up to me and they trust me just as much as I trust them so you know what I mean uh, I'm glad that I can be the guy to just you know be consistent for us in the run game and, and and contribute to the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, uh, after five games, you had you were quoted as saying that the team is still improving. Now you're after eight, nine games. Is the team still improving? I feel like there are still levels that we haven't reached. And I know that can be kind of hard to hear with how late it is into the season. But, you know what I mean, there's, it's a long season. There's a lot of learning we have to do within each other within the system and I feel like we all have a good feel for each other now and at this point it's just all about executing the plays you know what I mean so we're being put in position you know what I mean we know we got the guys to do it we just got to make things happen well this is normally a basketball podcast but you were doing so well um, it's now a basketball and football podcast some of the really uh, hardcore basketball fans are a little upset about that but um, I, I'll welcome other players on as well but if you go by last year's Atlantic 10 tournament and Massachusetts was a, a mid middling team and then they took it to the finals, I believe. So that's an obvious example of a team improving right, right into the playoffs. And yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I don't see any reason why you guys are still not improving as a team in every way, including, right. I don't know about you. I don't know what it's left for you. Are you going to jump over two players? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, man. I just I just want to get these wins, these next three games. You know what I mean? That's yeah. 
for anything to me. Whatever we got to do to get the W, I'm all for it. Well, let's have a little fun now and go to the uh, Monmouth game. I have a videotape of that. You guys were coming back the whole game. I mean, statistically, yeah. you were down and tied it down, tied it, big plays and all those overtimes. You had a big play in one of the overtimes. Yes, Just sir. incredible game. A game for the ages, as I call it. Yeah, definitely a historical game. I'll never forget that game. It was nice. And, and this is an understatement by you. You had said you wanted to play for a team where you had a chance to, to start or, or get some playing time. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty big understatement after you see what's gone on with your game, isn't it? I mean, that was the goal just coming in because you never know, you know, what's going to happen. And, you know, it's not my first time transferring. So I always come in with the mindset of earning the respect of my, my coaches and my teammates. You know what I mean? And then just trying to come into my role, figuring out what my role is for one and then playing that role to the best of my ability. And, you know, uh, obviously, you know, things have, have been working out pretty good for me here at Rhode Island. I'm just glad that I can contribute, honestly. That, that was my biggest thing, because being a transfer, you don't want to come in and be a guy who's not contributing. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. I'm, a, and I'm a senior, so, you know, mentally, you know, I got a better feel for the game, you know. So, and just coming here and adding on to the knowledge that they give me here, it's just work, it's perfect. So it just makes my game better all around. And, you know, Free transfers is the new norm, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's nothing these days. Yeah, yeah. But I know there's a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, yeah. Because you just you just want to show up and you want to perform. So, I mean, but it, for me, and, and I'm pretty sure I speak for a lot of us, the transfers here that I know personally, like it's just getting comfortable and just being ourselves. So, you know what I mean? And the coaches, you know, they, they, they brought us in with open arms, put us in position to just be ourselves. So I can't say it was too hard. And I didn't, I didn't feel too much pressure because, I, you know, I've been here since May, so it was really like no rush. You know what I mean? So I, I got here early, got, got a chance to study the playbook for the entire summer, got a chance to train, you know, with Coach Leach for the entire summer. So, you know, coming in early took the pressure off. I feel like if I would have came in a little later, like when camp actually started, that would have put some more pressure on me. But getting here early definitely helped. I heard you were a fixture on the beach, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, big beach guy when I first got here. Yeah. Couldn't stay at the beaches. But. Also, uh, you led in the weight room as well. You you were a big presence in the weight room. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Me and me and along a lot of the transfers, we brought some good energy. I was already here, but, you know, just brought some new guy energy to the team. Came in pushing some weight around, so that was fun. And you were also playing a little hoops. The basketball team's getting yeah, a lot yeah, of injuries. Yeah. Are you entertaining uh, <laughs> that was a. I'm, I'm not as entertaining as them. I can tell you that much. But we got out there, uh, you know, just some of our team bonding. You know what I mean? We just go out there, mm-hmm. hang out by the basketball court, shoot around, just hang out with the guys. Well, um, before we go to the PowerPoint, this show, believe it or not, is based on people overcoming obstacles. And I tell a lot of people who are not interested because it's sports uh, based that it's really not about sports. And mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you. Because I know your story, but I'd like to hear from you uh, about you overcoming obstacles. And I, I know uh, you could give me a, an excellent uh, story that will motivate other people to not get down on themselves. Yeah. How did you overcome some obstacles? Um, so I had two major uh, 
major bumps in a row coming out of high school. I was uh, I was actually committed to Monmouth University coming out of high school. And um, as time, they recruited me since like my sophomore year, my sophomore year, excuse me. As time went on, uh, SAT scores and all that type of stuff came about, but it was kind of late. You know what I mean? It was already my senior year by the time we talked about SAT scores. And they said that I need a certain score to, you know, qualify to get into the school. And I'm long story short, I don't get the score. Um, I had a conversation with the coaches over there that were recruiting me. I said I could either go to prep school or I could go to JUCO. Then they had a good JUCO in mind for me, which ended up being Lackawanna College. So I took that route. Um, get the screen. My freshman year, I read shirt. Uh, ended up doing a total of five semesters there. 2018, played in a bowl game in Arizona. We won that. 2019, played in a um, national championship. We lost that game by a touchdown to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, coming out of junior college, unfortunately, had no offers on the table. I spent uh, two weeks at home. You know what I mean? Everybody else was at, at school, committed to their schools. And all that. So I spent two weeks at home uh, on the couch, really, just you know, staying at my brother's house. Just I had a job. I was just working and working out. You know what I mean? So after that, uh, I had two friends that uh, from Lackawanna that got in contact with St. Francis for me because they were going there as well. And they um they put me in contact with the offensive coordinator over there over there. And uh they would give me a half a scholarship, go there, um, first team all NEC, set a school record with a ninety-eight uh rushing yard touchdown. Um yeah. then they had a had a pretty successful season there. And uh once again, you know, I end up in a situation where I enter the portal because I wanna, you know, obviously give myself a better opportunity to get to a bigger school. You know what I mean, so I can chase my dream, make it a little bit easier for myself. And um, I have a friend put me in contact with a coach again. And uh, it just, you know, God's been taking care of me as far as that goes because it's, it's clearly working out for me. So, you know, thanking him every chance I get and just going as hard as possible every day. But I never gave up on myself. You know, I got to give some shout outs to the, my, the people in my family, my corner, you know, my mother, my father, my older brother. You know what I mean? All the people that believe in me because those are really tough times for me. You know what I mean? And and they, and they kept me they kept me level headed and without them I would I definitely would never make it through but you know with the blessings of God it, you know, it's been it's been a long road but it's you know it seems like it's paying off a little bit now and this is why I do these podcasts so people could learn these stories like yours and find some inspiration because maybe they're undergoing some uh, difficult times like you were uh, you were on the top of the world your sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. You had an offer to go to Temple University. Well, let's go to the PowerPoint. What I noticed is your path has been consistent, continuous improvement since you got to Rhode Island. What do you do? You agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, hundred percent. Always, always try to better myself in all aspects of my game. Yeah, I mean, you just look at it and you just keep grinding out, and now you're reaching like a really a new height. And uh, but no one could have expected this success. I don't think. Did you expect it? Um, for me, uh, I always hoped for it, but uh, with the way things were going for me, I honestly didn't know because there, you know, there's ups and downs in life. Period. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you know, I don't mean to speak like I, I've been through it all, but I've been through some things in life and football. You know, but football has taught me a lot. These situations that I've been through have taught me a lot. So uh, I always hope for it, like I said, but I never knew it was coming. So, so three more yards is the hashtag for the team. What uh, exactly is that? Three more feet. Three more feet. Okay, okay. sorry about that. Three more, yep, three more feet. So that's just like um, a thing for Rhode Island, you know what I mean? The anchor symbolizes this place, you know what I mean? Three more feet, just, you know, at the, the extra effort, you know what I mean? As far as mm -hmm. like, goes, you know, that's, that's what we go by, three more feet, you know what I mean? You can look at that in a lot of ways. But, you know, like I said, just extra effort, just going hard and, you know, playing hard for the guys beside you and playing hard for Rhode Island. It seems like the pit game, even though you lost the game, might have been a turning point the way you talked about the game. And mm -hmm. you felt like you were in it. You rushed for 82 yards among one of the top uh, NCAA Division One programs. Can you speak about that game to our viewers? Oh, but that game, we knew that we were capable of playing with those guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we went into the we went into that game preparing, you know, to win. We we weren't coming in that game to do anything else. 
And uh, so going into that game, you know what I mean? We, we knew it was going to be a dog fight, obviously playing an AAC, ACC opponent, you know what I mean? And we're a CAA, you know, team. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, those five guys up front, man, they really make life easy for me. You know what I mean? I mean, I know 82 rushing yards might not be the best – for the, for the season for me, but it was uh it, it felt great to go in there and play a team of that caliber and you know give them eighty two rushing yards with two touchdowns. So that was yeah, a, that was and it was a huge wake up call for us. Just let us know like you know like we're way more than capable. You know what I mean? Way more than capable. When you get a sixty three yard run or long against a, like I said a, a top program, that must have felt really good. Yeah, it felt great. Felt great, uh, you know. I, I said it a couple times now, but those five guys up front, the hole, you, you know, almost anybody could ran through that hole. You know what I mean? On that, on that design play, you know, six three yards took it right to the house, and uh, then we got in zone, we celebrated it a little bit. I love the way you acknowledge uh, your offensive linemen like that. Yeah, because uh, those big guys don't get enough credit. You know, what I mean, it, it just in the game of football. Period. Uh, mm-hmm. I, don't think, I don't think they get enough credit. You know, it, it's not you know, the toughest position group in football, period. You know what I mean? O-line and D-line. You're just banging every single play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they they spend the most time on the field. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, their craft definitely needs to be respected some more. And, you know, you could could ask anybody on the team. I always tell our our O-line, you know, if if I rush for 132 yards, I tell them that we rush for 132 yards. You know what I mean? Because that's one. You know, they make me look good. And, you know, I want to make them look great. So. He's very fun to play with. He's a smart guy. You know what I mean? He's a playmaker as well, as you can see with his legs and his arm. You know I mean, he seems a guy that, you know, he has a story too as well. So, he, you know, he's played some college ball some other places, you know, just like I have. You know I mean, mm-hmm. although, although the places he played at were very uh, bigger than where I played. But, you know what I mean, we're two older guys coming in, just trying to lead this team to, you know, some some playoff victories and ultimately win a championship. But it's great playing with this team. Do you like the overtime format, the new one? It was uh, honestly when when Ed scored that touchdown, I wasn't sure if we won the game or if we were going to keep playing. You know, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely tiring that format. But I mean, it is what it is. I don't make the rules; I just play by them. Is it part of the reason, possibly, why you guys went for two yesterday? Because you're just exhausted from almost playing yeah. a game and a half. Last I mean, week, if, if you you know you put yourself in the shoes of Coach Flynn, I, I believe so. I think that that definitely played a part. You know what I mean? We weren't looking for an overtime game. You know what I mean? Obviously, you want to go out there and get the W, but you know things you know didn't go our way in some aspects of the game, and that's what caused us to have to be put in that situation. Would you have liked to have the ball? And nothing against um, the play that was called, but. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, all of our – I feel like all, if you were to ask any of our playmakers that question, we would all want the ball. You know what I mean? But that's the kind of team we have. We have guys who are capable of doing so. So if one isn't out there, you know, you believe in the next man up to get the job done. Lackawanna. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the show on Netflix? And if you haven't, I'd recommend it. Last Chance You. Of course I've seen it, yeah. Isn't it great, that show? Yeah, great show. Good, good inside view. But it also shows you how – uh well, it shows the world how that JUCO's ran, but a lot of JUCO's are different. You know what I mean? Some guys have it harder. Some guys have it a little bit better than others. Like uh, at Lackawanna, we had meal plans. I know some JUCO's that didn't have meal plans in the school, which is like in the middle of the city. You know what I mean? So it's different everywhere for everyone. But all in all, you know, JUCO guys, we all have a bond with each other just because we recognize the grind and the struggle that you have to make, like that you have to go through to make it out of JUCO. But I'm sure you uh, identified with the the show yeah definitely it's in some ways definitely you know because everybody's trying to get recruited coming out of juco so you know almost every practice every scrimmage every day is you know just an opportunity to prove yourself you know what i mean because yeah. sometimes at lackawanna we would have a uh, power five schools coming in i mean power five all the way down to division three schools coming in just to watch us practice so now practice uh-huh. turns into a like you know big time game day because you're fighting for an offer you know what i mean so it's pretty cool did people uh, show up in Scranton? Yeah, yeah. Obviously. A lot of a lot of guys on my team in Lackawanna were highly recruited. You know what I mean? A lot of guys yeah. were highly recruited. They had some big names, guys come out of there. And some big schools come in and uh, try to recruit some guys. 
and you uh, guys made it to the finals. That must have been fun. Yeah, that, that was a great experience. Got to play in the national championship. That was a great experience. The year before that, won the ball game in 2018 over there in Arizona. I didn't come out on top, but, you know, like I said, the experience was everything. I uh, got to meet him. He was one of the first guys I met at St. Francis, so we've been together for like the past three years now. We got some uh, some family members who are actually friends, so I got word about him before I actually meet him at St. Francis. So it was just great to, you know, meet a guy that I can relate to like that. We're alike in a lot of ways. You know, we got a great relationship. And um, him, him bringing me here with him was just, you know, a great help to me, obviously. You know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. he's a true friend. He, he, you know, he's been helping me a lot since we've been together. You know what I mean? So much love to that guy. Tell, tell me about that COVID year. It was it was pretty rough. I mean, it, it was a blind side. You know, obviously everybody knew about what was going on with the COVID stuff, all that type of stuff. But, you know, you, you were just sitting back waiting on the word. And um, I, I remember the exact day we were in uh, meetings. I was at St. Francis, obviously. We were at meetings. And the Amber Alert goes off on our phone. You know what I mean? We get emails from the school, all that type of stuff. Had to literally get up and leave our meetings and went back to our rooms and people were somewhat of quarantine then, you know what I mean? We stopped practices and all that type of stuff. And within the next couple of days, you know, they sent a lot of people home. So that was really, that was really rough. Cause I didn't know where it would go with football and, you know, uh, no, nobody's getting younger. We just get older. So I'm thinking like, uh, will, will this, will I get this year eligibility back? Will we play this season? Will we not? And, uh, unfortunately in, uh, St. Francis, we didn't play that spring season. They, uh, they opted out of the season. So I just had, you know, a whole entire semester off to just really just practice and just work out, you know what I mean? But that's where the blessing mm -hmm. came in because I had more time to develop myself mentally and physically, you know, but it was also hard because you're kind of like lost without being able to do what you love to do. And just in the blink of an eye, everything had changed, you know, not just for me. I don't mean to sound selfish when I say that, but for the world, you know, so it was pretty tough, but, you know, uh, without COVID, I wouldn't be here right now. So, you know, another part of the blessing. Tell me a little bit about your high school. We haven't got to talked too much about that. Yeah, I went to a small high school in, um, over, uh, in South Jersey, uh, Pine Hill, New Jersey, named Overbrook. Yes. Uh, freshman year, played a little special team. Sophomore year, became a starter. Had a pretty decent season. Probably had about 500 rushing yards. Junior year. I led the state in uh, touchdowns with 25 total. I think I had 18 rushing with over 1,000 rushing yards. Senior year, another 1,000 rushing yards season. Had about 19 touchdowns. Um, I also got an award for being the first back since Ron Dane, he was, who uh, went off to play at West. He, he played in my high school. He played in Wisconsin. He had some time in NFL. And uh, he had back to back yard season. So I was the first guy since him to do that. So. It felt good to be recognized in high school, but I had a pretty decent high school career. Did Will Chamberlain go to that school? That's the one in Philadelphia. There's two. Okay. Yeah, that, there's two. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. That, I usually get that question a lot. But there's yeah. two, that's the one in Philadelphia. I went to uh, to Overbrook and South Jersey. That would, yeah, I, I recognize that immediately. And uh, I want to remind everyone, here's a little, this is as close as you're going to get until the bonus coverage of hurdling over a player. Uh, but don't uh, tune out after we sign off in a, a little bit because we have bonus coverage. You're going to see two major hurdles. This is the end of hurdle number one. And tell me a little bit about this one. It, I thought it was a game when I first saw it, but it, it was a practice game or something like that. It was a uh, end of camp scrimmage. It's a couple of weeks before uh, Stony Brook. I think about two weeks before we played Stony Brook season opener. So um, camp was ending, like I said. Uh, last couple of scrimmages, just to, you know, find out some depth chart things, you know, see who can do what and see who will be where for the season. And um, what better time for me to make a play to just, you know, show the coaches and my teammates, you know, what I'm capable of and what I can do when the ball's in my hands. And were you surprised that it received almost 19,000 views and made yes. it by play? Yes, yes, yes. That was definitely surprising to me. Um, Definitely got to shout out our media guys because they got they caught they got the clip for one, you know, which gave everybody a good view of the play. And then they released it on a roadie football page. And from there, it just went crazy. Yeah, it, it's something how it, you can just one minute 
you're a player in the Rhode Island team. Next minute, you're a national star for the day. And uh, it's going to be with you the rest of your life. You can show your family in years to come. It's great. But uh, so you're telling me the coach gave you that name. Mm-hmm. And I've also heard that even though you were on the track in high school, that has nothing to do with your talents as a hurdle master. No, I never ran hurdles. I never I never did hurdles in track when I was in high school. Just uh, 100, 200, 400, and some relays. That was it. Never been a hurdle guy. You, you also said it's just a reaction. I just want to get in a little bit deeper into that and take me through it. You, you see a defender at the last minute. Is there something you're seeing that you can remember that makes you decide to jump? Is it or it's just a total reflex? Honestly, it's a reflex. Yeah. I, I, I really, people ask me, I get that question a lot whenever I, whenever I do hurdle someone. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, like my first time hurdling someone was like my junior year in high school. And in high school, it's illegal, so they would throw flags on me. But I've only heard of like twice in high school, but in college, you know, it's clearly illegal. So if I'm able to do it. Why not do it? You know, sometimes if you can't get left or right, you can't go through them. The only way is up. So. Well, I I can't wait for our viewers to watch this in a few minutes. Yeah. And now it's having a little fun. You know, there's your co-master, uh, the Jedi master, and you're the hurdle master. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. You're better looking than this guy, though. Yeah, yeah, I got him beat. Yeah. I want to go one more time on into the San, San Francis video. Mm-hmm. For about a minute, and we're going to look at another. The only hurdle you're going to see on the show is this one. But uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's not a fluke. Because we see your talents already. Mm-hmm. And I've seen this already past. It looks just like you're going the other way. That's all. Mm-hmm. But we, we saw this in the Monmouth game. So stay with me here. Because there's more stuff. Remember this stuff, these games? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary Mac. There we go. Yeah. (laughs) I just am, I I can never get enough of watching these things. And I'm pretty sure everyone else. Does this bring back some really good memories, though? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Some nice plays, I remember. And it's a good program, too. It's not like, uh, you weren't, you're, it's still Division One AA, and how are they doing now as far as the team? Um, I'm pretty sure they just clinched their uh, playoff berth. They're undefeated in their conference, so I'm happy for those guys. They're doing well. That's great for them. One more play. One more touchdown. Huh? Maine's going to see one next week. Yeah, for sure. That's it. That's it. a couple of those, hopefully. Well, we learned a lot today, Marcus, and Thanks for uh, fitting me in. I know it's, it's, you must be really tired from all these game two and a half games in two weeks, but um, it's been great having you and, and meeting you and, and getting to know you. And uh, thank you thank for having me. Appreciate it. Also, uh, remember when it comes to roadie sports, it's always go road. Those doctors were mystified. FCS camp, University of Rhode Island football. This is Marcus DeShields. Oh! Hurdles a defender and picks up 30 yards on deflay. <laughs> Look at DeShields. Flashy. <laughs> master man Come I, on now. I never i never think about it it's just you know it's it's really a reaction i say that as humbly as possible it's just a reaction it just comes out but i'm glad it played out the way it did and i got in the box